Okay, this is a bit of instruction for the NRAF 492 combination therapy unit. As you see here in front of us, it's a new dial, LCD display, rotational dial indication, input sockets are across the front, the on-off button is at the back, on the left-hand side, you press that, power comes up, unit comes on and does its own self-test. Once it's complete the self-test, you can choose to plug in your ultrasound head and you can choose to plug in your electrode cables. Ultrasound head has a green connector like this and it will fit in either to the A or B socket. As soon as it enters in, you can see that the orange light will come on on the ultrasound head to tell you it is connected. On the left hand side here, we have our two cables for um, electrotherapy. We plug the red into the red port, the black into the black port on channel one, and that allows us to have this cable for plugging into our electrodes. On the display, you can see we've got a home screen. At the top of the home screen, we've got little key bars, and that will tell you how far you're into the menu and how far you are into each section of this. We have electrotherapy, ultrasound, combination, and system settings. Below this, you can see intensity for the electrodes for channel one, intensity for channel two, and ultrasound, and timer. This is um, channel B of the ultrasound, should you have a second head. So let's go straight into this. It's very simple. If we go into electrotherapy, when you do that, you see you've stepped down one more uh, level, and here you've got clinical protocols, favorites, manual operation, and programming. If we look at clinical protocols in the first instance, you can see now the dial is lit up and ready to operate. On the left-hand side, we've got I. I is for information. And here we have the different conditions that we can treat, which are in the protocols. If we rotate the dial, this will go down the different pages. And you can see here, this is page three of nine, page four of nine, five of nine, and so on. You rotate this until you find a condition that you wish to try and treat. And from that, these protocols, which are actually installed and created due to research, are there for you to apply to your patient. So we can rotate these back until we find something that we want to work on. And um, let's see if I can find something here. So, So we have here epicondylitis and let's look at some low back pain. If we're not sure what we want, we can press the I. In the I we can read. Here you can see this is page one of three and you can read what this does. We can then turn the dial onto page two, shows you our electrode placement on the page three and shows you the mus musculature that we're actually going to work on. If you're happy on that, you can simply press the green tick here and that will bring you into the channel selection. So you can have channel one, channel two, or channel one and two, depending on what you want to treat. If we select one, it will come up and tell us exactly what our protocol is. You can see your waveform, your pulse rates. You can see here the timer, the pulse width, and the rise and fall time of the pulses. This is constant current as opposed to constant voltage and constant current is probably the better setting to ensure that you do not uh, have a possible hotspot underneath an electrode. When you're happy and ready for that, you press on here and then you can increase your intensity. If I go above, I think it's five degree, five milliamps here, eight milliamps maybe, it will start to read that there is no electrodes and will cut off. Patient circuit interrupted, which means you haven't put the electrodes on, which means you can't turn up the intensity and then place the electrodes on the patient. Therefore, you can't give the patient a shock. Press the green tick again and it brings you back to the start. You can now see this is returned to zero. Place your electrodes on the, the patient and increase the intensity. Timer starts to count down and you know it's operational. At any stage, you can change any of these by simply tapping them and adjusting it. 
if you feel that you need to change any of the pulse widths, pulse frequencies, any of these, you can see that we're still applying our current and you can still change these. It's advisable to let the patient know that you're changing them and that they may feel a change in the current that they uh, is being applied to them. The rise and fall time you can change as well from one second, six seconds, 12 seconds, one to 30 seconds. Most of the time it's six to six, and this is the most comfortable rise and fall time between the upper and lower beat frequencies of your carrier frequency. That's old school, um, and you should know that. Return this to zero, if you wish, or simply wait for the, the timer to finish. When you're finished, you can see that there's an orange triangle with a circle, and when you want to stop it completely, press this button. If you do not do that, and you inadvertently come out of it, sometimes the system won't work. So if you turn it on and you find that there's this circle up here, always press that and turn it off. You can either go backwards here and find another condition that you want. You could look at this and read it this. Again, we have three pages on this and it shows again the musculature. When you're happy again, press the select button, choose the channel you wish to operate on and now you can see this is in the differential current rather than a TENS current. Again, you can change these pulse widths and the beat frequencies by simply turning the dial. On here is your four kilohertz carrier frequency, which is your standard carrier frequency for all electrotherapy, or in differential, sorry. If you wish to make it uh, more pleasant for the patient, you can change this by simply tapping it and increasing that carrier frequency wave. The higher the frequency, the easier it is for the patient to accommodate to the, uh, the current. The lower this frequency, the more aggressive the current will feel. But as I say, four kilohertz tends to be your standard carrier frequency. Once again, when you're happy, press the current, increase the intensity. When you're happy and finished, you can press home. And now that I've pressed home, you can also see now that this button is still illuminated, which means that the current is still operating and the whole frequency is still operating. So to ensure that you can do something else, should you wish to now go to ultrasound, you can select ultrasound, but you can't do anything because this is still operational. To stop it completely, press that button and that stops all of the operationals of the output of the machine. In the ultrasound, again, we have clinical protocols favorites and manual operation. <clears throat> Clinical protocols is as we did before. We press on this. We have five pages in here. We can select something here. Let's take um, number spine. It's got 10 minutes continuous output. It's on one megahertz ultrasound. It's telling you it's in channel A and it's a display as in watts per centimeter. We can change this again. We can simply press on the button and change the frequency of the ultrasound head. This is a one and three megahertz ultrasound and you can switch between both. Again, you can change your time by simply rotating the dial and you can go into pulse mode should you wish to do so. Pulse mode is something obviously that everybody changes to suit themselves. And again, you have the output of this right down to 10%. I have to say that in all my time, probably below 50% has never really been used because the power output is quite low. <clears throat> when you're happy here, you can see that it's automatically went to 1.5, but you can change that if you're not happy. Once the applicator is then applied to the tissue, this will change to green and the output will start. It will not start while it's sitting in free air. And if you lose contact, it will also stop and pause. To simply return, you can return here. To simply stop what we've been doing, we press stop then go back one, and then we can go back one again. In here, in manual operation, it is what it says, it's manual operation. You choose which frequency you wish, you choose how much time you want to give someone, and you can also choose whether you use continuous or pulsed, deciding on your frequency and the actual pulse width. This centimeter squared are watts. So watts are watts per centimeter squared. It's totally up to you again depending on what you're used to and what you like. To step back, press the back arrow, press the back arrow, and we're ready to go. Combination therapy will be covered in our next video.